Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuning in to the WWE Movie Maker channel, WWE Rumors, Reports, News, and Controversy. This is the channel for everything professional wrestling. Enjoy the video. Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? WWE Movie Maker here, and I am here to give you, I believe, which is episode number five um, of WWE Rumors, Reports, News, and Controversy, the hour-long podcast that I've created into this weekly um, week, weekly episode or weekly video, um, <clears throat> and mind you, man, my uh, feelings about this are very high. I really hope that uh, this goes somewhere and this weekly podcast that I upload will be getting some steam. For this specific podcast, I'm not going to waste a lot of your time here uh, with this intro, but for this specific podcast, there's actually going to be two parts to this. So the first part is right here on YouTube. The guys that are listening to this are... They are listening to it on YouTube because I will upload this video on YouTube. This is the first part of the WWE Rumors Reports News Controversy for May 12, 2017. The first part, part five, the first part of this episode. And it will be on YouTube.com. The second part, which will be uploaded simultaneously along with the uh well as uh, you know as, as soon as the first part is out the second part will also be out on vid.me slash wwe movie maker that's vid.me slash wwe movie maker the first part is this part right now and the second part will be up on vid.me so the only reason i'm doing this in two parts is well uh the main reason is because i got a lot of new stories and I think that if I try to plug it all in within one episode, it's probably going to go over an hour. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to put that on you guys. So these videos will be 30 minutes each, right, which will compact into one hour, but they'll separately be uploaded on uh, different uh, platforms, right? Um, and I think it's also beneficial not only for VidMe and YouTube, you know, in terms of, you know, me uploading on different platforms for you guys to get it, but I think it's also beneficial that, you know, I'm I'm equally dividing up this content on different platforms. <clears throat> I think that's uh, a very great thing. So that's just a quick update for you guys. A quick uh, notice that this video is part one. Part two will be up uh, as soon as this is up, and that's on VidMe. All right, WWE Movie Maker, VidMe, WWE Movie Maker, YouTube. Stay tuned for that. Now today. Rumors, reports, news, controversy. The next episode, man. A lot of news to go over. Before I get into that news, I want to apologize. My voice is, it's gone. Well, it's not gone. I'm still speaking, but it's about to be gone. It's about to fully fade away. I can, um, <coughs> as I'm speaking, I feel like I'm losing my voice. And you, you know, you want to get that sensation when you're talking and you feel like your voice is going down or you feel like there's something in your throat, try to clear it, right? But then you realize, oh no, my voice is just getting lower, you know? Like, I can't do anything about it, but it feels awkward. It feels weird, right? And that's what's happening right now, you know. Um, <clears throat> but I don't even care if my voice goes away at this point. All I really care is about is about this weather going away. That's for sure. Um, but I'm still here to give you the video. Oh, do you, th you think this is going to stop me? A cut-off leg, a cut-off arm. I don't give a shit. Those things won't even stop me from uploading a video. I'm going to be uploading this for you guys, man. But screw this weather. It's freaking cold. Uh, hopefully next week it said next week on the weather channel that is supposed to get better so hopefully that's the case it's freezing in this area and uh again i didn't wear a jacket today i got uh i got paid for it uh froze my ass off coming home and uh it was actually it was actually a little uh a little warmer today but in the morning oh god damn it you need you need you absolutely need a jacket and that's the sad part but, uh, you know, that is uh, not the only sad part here. You know, let's get right into the WWE rumors, reports, news, controversy. 
Um, first news story that I talked to you about. It's pretty sad. You know, not not it's not like somebody died, but it's pretty sad in the fact that what humanity has become, and more specifically, what this man has become. I uploaded a video talking about this specific event this week. If you guys, there are about, uh, I guess, 10 or 11 people that have view, had viewed that video um, <clears throat> because I deleted it right after. The reason why I deleted it right after is because I did not know the backstory. I made a video about ranting and absolutely going off on this topic. Once I uploaded it, I went to go see other, you know, new stories and stuff and, you know, I didn't fully understand the situation behind this. I heard a lot of people tweeting about this story and I didn't have the full news on it. And I didn't explain, you know, everything that happened with this news story on that video. And so therefore that video turned out to be, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it just turned out to be inaccurate. And I realized if I upload this, if this has stayed there, I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. And I don't want this being up there because of my carelessness of not, you know, fully understanding the situation. So I deleted that video. You, the people who have viewed it would know what I'm talking about. The JBL bullying situation. JBL continues to bully when he mocks a Muslim wrestler by referencing ISIS and waterboarding. You can clearly hear from the voice in me that I'm not screaming or yelling over this topic at this point because I understand what the story is here. And I will explain it to you right now. All right. <clears throat> So, you know, the JBL bullying scandal seems to be something that WWE doesn't seem to care much about. Mauro Ronaldo has signed off from the WWE, as we know. Um, however, on this week's episode of Bring It to the Table, um, JBL continued to make comments that angered a number of people due to lack of sensitivity. So this is what he said. He talked about um, Sami Zayn, right? And he said this. He was joking about Sami Zayn. He said this, and apparently this was actually a backstage segment. I don't, I don't, or a backstage, not a backstage segment. What am I saying? It was a, it was during the break, the commercial, right? It, uh, it wasn't aired on television. JBL was in heel mode when he was talking about popular SmackDown Live wrestler Sami Zayn. JBL was telling co-hosts Corey Graves and Peter Rosenberg that Sami Zayn was not one of his favorite wrestlers, and then made jokes about things he would rather do than hang out with Sami Zayn. <clears throat> He said, I'd rather be waterboarded than to sit down and talk pro wrestling with Sami Zayn. I would rather be captured by ISIS than have to have dinner with Sami Zayn, which went over the top. And we know the guy's heel, but let's let's face this. Even a guy who you know has the personality of JBL wouldn't say that. All right, you you gotta understand the backstory here. That makes no sense anyways. It's completely offensive. But it doesn't make sense anyways. Now, while this seems like he's making a reference to the current trends, there is much more to that. In an interview with Yahoo News from back in 2015, Sami Zayn said he was born in Canada, but his parents were uh, b uh, both Syrian and moved to Canada in the 70s. Um, <clears throat> he said that he was raised in a 100% Arab household and is very much an Arab when it comes to his culture and religion. This is what he said. He said, I used to... Uh, I use it less and less with my parents these days. Uh, that is, you know, speaking Arabic, he uses that less and less nowadays because, uh, you know, he lives away from Orlando and near the Performance Center. Uh, or, well, no, he lives away from them. And he lives in the perform near the Performance Center near Orlando, uh, and I don't practice it much anymore. However, I do feel 100% connected to the Arab audience. That's what Sammy said in an ESPN interview. He also said he is a hardworking a person against the de de demonization of Muslims. Sami Zayn all was outspoken when he uh, came to Donald Trump and the ordered ban of travelers from Muslim-majority nations earlier this year, which included Sami Zayn's parents' home country of Syria. Sami Zayn said that it was important to him uh, that he got signed with WWE on a platform that uh, on a platform that that will or big to educate people on the. Uh, Fashilis on how Muslims are viewed in America. Sami Zayn said that these stereotypes are wrong and that they do not have, uh, you know, that they are not that different than any other uh, country. However, making the joke 
of mentioning ISIS and waterboarding might be considered a bad taste to many people. To be honest, it's actually pretty, pretty offensive to a lot of people. Um, I don't care who you are, man. It's a joke. It's not supposed to be taken as a joke. And, you know, it's uh, it's just not something that <clears throat> should be said in that type of way, in that type of manner, in that type of environment, and especially in the circumstance it was, right? Um, because... Ultimately, what they were trying to do is to have JBL be hated here. And they accomplished that, but they also accomplished more things that necessarily wouldn't go well with a lot of viewers. And again, you're trying to please your viewers um, most of the times about the content you create. If you're ending up not, uh, I guess, you know, providing to every single age group or, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it turns out to be a little offensive to some people. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it also seems to be a bad timing since this week saw the United States earn a slight victory over ISIS in Syria, where 70 of members of the terrorist organization just surrendered to the U.S. led or lead coalition in uh, Tabaka, I think. Tab Tabqua, Tabqua, I believe, on Wednesday. In a time where racism and hatred are rising. Uh, which is an ad, another sad thing. It's a topic for another time, but it is a sad thing. And, uh, you know, it seems like the WWE would want to avoid these sort of, you know, comments by their talent. It certainly is something that, you know, uh, at this point, saying something like this, again, hatred is, it, with the with this racism stuff, it is rising and all that stuff, right? But, I mean, for JBL to just say this, you know, um, it's it's something that you just it's not a topic you should even bring up. First of all, ISIS is a is a radical group. It's a it's a dangerous group that is, you know, wreaked havoc over the world and a lot of parts of it and have, you know, killed many people. All right. They're a dangerous group making, you know, reference to that. You know, he is truly that kind of human being in real life uh, that really, you know, acts the same way, it seems like he acts the same way that he does on television. If that's the case, that I've heard from a lot of people, well, then it's pretty, he's not much of a good guy, right? I don't know of a story uh, with somebody who may have said, you know, JBL was a nice guy. You know, he was a nice person to meet. He was he was gentle. He was all that kind of stuff. I, I've never heard that, right? Which is sort of surprising to me because I thought that JBL was one of those guys, right, until this year. Because again, I wasn't that 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 guy who was on the internet all day looking for uh, <clears throat> news on JBL and what he's doing now. Because I didn't know his past, I didn't know what what kind of stuff he used to do. I didn't know, and and just this year, all the stuff is being released. There's there's stuff that people don't even know he actually did. Bullying guys and gals that you know uh, we we thought you know weren't being bullied, or we thought you know left the company uh, because of some issue they had, but they left. A lot of them left because of what JBL did. And a lot of them got into the issues they did because of JBL. And this, I don't know what Sami Zayn said to this or responded to this because obviously he'd take, if he, if he takes this as a joke and laughs about it, like he's like, oh, okay. It would kind of surprise me knowing the guy he is, right? He's very, he's very, uh, he, he cares about himself and he cares about, you know, the way he's portrayed. He cares a lot about the current events and talks a lot about the world and society and he he has a very high regard for that kind of stuff and he always wants to make sure things are done the right way that people you know understand his point of view and he's that's totally fine that's totally fine you know from the kind of person he is the background he has and everything he deserves to have that right you know uh just like everybody else to have their own opinion so i don't know what he's going to say about this i've not heard anything from it um i don't even think he's going to be addressing this because first of all this was in the most obscure environment ever it was on bring it to the table and it wasn't even aired so the people that did see it they saw it but there's a lot of people who didn't see it and don't care to see it or know about it right so technically it may be going under the blue but the only reason it will be going you know away or fade away is because he's done so many other things that everything he does now just layers on top of what he did previously you know bullying Marinello, okay over top of that you know uh, bullying Lillian Garcia over top of that, you know. It's just layers and layers and layers of what he's been doing, and it's just not stopping, you know. Um, unfortunately, on the same episode of Bring It to the Table, all these three hosts poked fun at the Mauro Ronaldo situation with JBL as well. 
Rosenberg said that there was controversy surrounding comments that he made about Roman Reigns. Corey Graves said that there's also controversy about comments he made about Shane McMahon. Uh, obviously, with AJ Styles. The match at uh, WrestleMania. Um, when the cameras went to JBL and the wrestling world is still talking about JBL uh, and what he said to Mauro Ranallo, or about Mauro Ranallo, JBL tried to look guilty before changing the subject. Instead, JBL talked about a golf game he played this week before he ignored and ignored the bullying controversy completely. Now, there's also actually news about a former superstar who wants to, you know, break JBL's neck if he ever returned back to the company. So this coincides with the bullying thing. People are talking about him being a bully. I don't even like using the bully term because that's that's something that um, really should not be happening. I mean, seriously, adults bullying adults? What kind of bullcrap world is this? Come on, man. You know, that happens with kids and stuff because they, you know... <coughs> Uh, excuse me, you know, they they don't really know as much as adults do, right? It, it's sort of upsetting to read about this kind of stuff where JBL and his bullying kind of stuff, like we're getting this kind of stuff in 2017, really? Bullying still, you know, in this company, right? I, you know, I don't even like saying the word bully anymore. Um, it's just an overrated word. It really is. It's an overrated topic that should just, just fuck it, man. Just stop it. You know. Um, and that's why simply, um, you know, it, it pisses me off. And I don't, don't worry. I'm not those guys that are, you know, very, very self-serving and, and all, you know, uh, really care a lot about, you know, those, 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 you know, human rights, women rights, all that kind of stuff. Those, those, those feminists and stuff. You know, like I don't do that kind of stuff, man. I respect everybody. I'm not one of those protesters. But I'm just saying the word bully and bullying in this day and age shouldn't even exist between grown-ups and adults. Grown-ups is another fucking kid word. Get that out of here, man. Adults should not be here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in terms of the JBL situation, it's continuing. We got a actual former superstar who says he'd return to WWE and he would break JBL's neck. He'd break it. Like Stone Cold, who got his neck broken. He'd break his neck on purpose this time. So after recent bullying allegations, we know that former WWE uh, champion and SmackDown, current SmackDown Live commentator JBL, isn't the most famous guy amongst his peers at the moment. Well, he's famous. Not in the... Not in the babyface role, but he's truly famous as 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 this heel, this typical asshole. That he's famous for that. Now Layfield is believed to be who is uh, to be blamed for the beloved SmackDown Live commentator leaving the company, Marinalo. Um Former WWE superstar and tag team champion Rene Dupree, I believe that's how you say the name, Rene Dupree, recently did an interview with Hannibal TV to discuss JBL's bowling allegations and had an interesting comparison. For the man from Texas. Go watch the movie Dazed and Confused. It is a character played by Ben Affleck. Who basically flunked himself out of high school. For the sole purpose that he can come back and haze the young kids coming from junior high. And hit him with the stick. That's the best description I can give JBL. Dupree also stated that JBL gets people to do his dirty work for him. He never personally does anything, but he likes to get people under him. Like the military, a lower-ranking person to do his own dirty work for him. As for what Dupree believes happened between JBL and Ronaldo, Dupree says, Morrow may not have fit the WWE's mold. Again, like I described earlier, there are certain tests to you know test certain people. Maybe he doesn't fit the mold because he's not a wrestler. He never came from the wrestling background. Uh, the guy's very talented, and so perhaps there's a lot of jealousy in the business. You know, uh, again, he's been there a while and is higher in the rankings. <coughs> Excuse me. He also continues to say that he's on one, or he's one of the people that the higher ups feel has a good judge of character for that people that fit the company. Then Dupree went on to say that he'd never return to the WWE with someone like JBL still there because he'd probably break the Southern's neck. 
that's still there. You know, they're all Southern boys. They all stick together. Even though I'm a persona non grata, that's no way in hell, or there's no way in hell, that a person like me would go back knowing that he's there because I'd probably break his fucking neck. That's what he said, man. Exact comments that he stated. You can watch the full video and interview on Hannibal TV uh, on YouTube.com. What are your thoughts, man? Dupree's comments. Uh, again, I'm not very familiar with who Dupree is. He might have had a different name or something. I don't know really who this guy is. He's a wrestler. That's all I know. Mind you, I'm not disrespecting the guy. I didn't watch wrestling that intent previously. I know everything in the major storylines that happened. I don't know a lot of these other guys. But Rene Dupree, a former WWE, it says here, superstar, wants to break his neck. Could you blame him? You know, now people coming around with physical threats, death threats, right? You got to understand, how is this faring for JBL? Does he even give a shit? Does he really care that much, right? If you want to break somebody's neck, right, you piss, you really piss, you, you really hate them and they piss you off, right? This just tells you, again, this just adds to the layers I was talking about. So many people coming here with these stories are explaining to you what they think of JBL and his personality. And if they hate it, you, you think they'd take time out of their day to go piss on another guy and lie about them to get, you know, publicity, you know, and then ultimately be ratted out by somebody else saying, oh, you know, this guy's a liar. JBL was fine. JBL was a good guy. Nobody's doing that. They all go out there to tell their truth and their, their true part of the story, which was, again, what JBL did to them. And it was most likely not good. Superstar wants to break his neck. Could you blame him? Not really. I mean, with the Sami Zayn situation, that's, you know, I don't understand how that's not being talked all around the wrestling business. That's a huge ass story. And that's something that really, um, you know, it's, it's controversial. It's not really even controversial. It's, it's just one-sided. That's wrong, you know. And how are, you know, so many people uh, not discussing that story, you know, sort of like how the Paige situation happened a few months ago with the leaked photos and videos. That was all over the fucking internet. This should be all over the fucking internet. It really should. Because um, JBL, not that he deserves to get that popularity and that publicity, but people should know this is the type of guy you're going to be meeting if you go to the WWE, right? Um, to be honest, after hearing this kind of news, you know, I as soon as I heard JBL bullying Mauro and all and bullying guys that aren't the WWE type style or the molded from that, I come immediately thought of the guys that came from uh, outside of WWE. And my first thought was AJ Styles. Is AJ Styles getting the same treatment? You know, we won't know, and we probably will never know until later on if that was the case, if he was ever bullied by JBL. It's just a random, you know, not even a, it's just, it's just a random statement I want to put out there because we don't know for a fact. Is he still doing this kind of stuff? Is this even real? He he boycotted the situation I'm bringing to the table, right? Guys like Samoa Joe, you know, all these guys outside from WWE, not molded from WWE, you know, AJ Styles specifically, you know, what happened when he came to the WWE, you know, um, he wasn't given a WWE Championship title shot right away, but he was certainly in the main event. You know, he was certainly, you know, WWE Champion and this huge star, and he's getting these pops in everywhere. I, I'm assuming that, you know, somebody's got to be jealous of him. Somebody has to. And maybe that's the reason JBL's not bullying on him, because he's like, oh, you know what? You know, I'm not a wrestler anymore. I don't need to be jealous about this guy. You know, I'm going to be jealous about the commentators because that's my job. You know, I'm the best at commentator. That's that's maybe the, the, the you know, the behavior that he has towards commentary and saying, you know, I'm the best, right? And he bullies other guys. You know, I don't think he bullies wrestlers anymore. I think it's sort of gone now, but like not personally anymore. He's still taking shots at people. But I don't think he bullies a lot of guys backstage anymore. It's just mostly, it's mostly, uh, it was pretty much Mauro Ronaldo, the latest one. And I guess that was because for the circumstance it was. It was the commentator that he was getting, that was getting bullied, right? Because that's, wherever JB, whatever line of work JBL's in, if there's somebody better than him, he's going to bully you. He was a wrestler, he bullied a lot of wrestlers. Now he's a commentator. Where did where Mauro Ronaldo go? Right out the exit door, right? That's what I'm saying. So, you know, if somebody wants to break this guy's neck, I wouldn't be surprised. Would I do the same? I'm not going to comment on that because I don't want to get heat for saying that. Now, 
let's get on to other news, man. We talked a lot about JBL in this video, part one. Speaking of, you know, leaving the company, Big Cass reveals that he was nearly fired from the WWE. What saved his job? That's the question here, man. Big Cass was nearly fired by the WWE. I heard on the uh, WrestleMania Monday 24 video that aired on WWE Network uh, that he did talk about how, you know, if his gig with Enzo Amore did not get over, they w he would have been completely gone. I heard something like that. So maybe this has something to do with what he said there, and there's like, you know, explanation in the backstory. But let's see what happens here, man. Colin Cassidy, who's his real name, you know, his career was near nearly cut short because of lack of direction for his character. During a recent episode of WWE 24 on the WWE Network, Cassidy revealed that he was nearly axed by the company and discussed the only reason why he kept his job, WWE 24. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the day, same WWE 24 I talked about. Um... I don't think it is, but let's see. Um, he said, all the things I had to deal down in FCW and NXT, people telling you that you're never going to make it, people doubting you the reason why I haven't fired you is because you're seven feet tall. Yes, okay. So just by reading this, sorry guys, but just by reading this, I have to tell you guys, this is from the uh, WrestleMania Monday uh, WWE 24 video. Um, I'm not sure why this is an article that was released today though. But let's continue reading what he had to say here. Um, he continued to say, that's an exact quote for somebody. The reason why you haven't been fired is because you're seven feet tall. You know, that's what somebody said. The only reason why you're not gone yet is because you're seven feet tall. That's the only reason I haven't been fired yet. Okay. Uh, Colin Cassidy, you know, Big Cass also shared that because of his constant doubters and naysayers, being called up to the main roster the day after WrestleMania 32, was something that he earned. As so many hurdles were in front of him and Enzo Amore before the debut of Raw. After spending a directionless initial run in FCW, uh, Big Cass would be rebranded as, well, yeah, rebranded as Big Cass and partner up with his friend Enzo Amore, who are real-life friends, actually. Apparently, he said he had not met Enzo Amore for a few, like, many, many years until the WWE tryout and then realized, oh, this was the same guy. All right, that was just, a, you know, a random story. Uh, that he started talking about. Coining themselves as the realest guys in the room, the duo ended up becoming popular due to their tag team dynamic and infectious catchphrases. And the, again, the idea or the, you know, the way you catch on to these modern day, you know, uh, modern day stories, these modern day things that are happening now. It's very modern, their, their characters, what I'm trying to say. Um, unfortunately for Enzo Cass, they were unable to win the NXT ta championships, tag team championships, though coming very close. Same thing here, man. They're very close to winning the Raw tag team titles. They can't do it. Uh, despite this, their in-ring maturity as a team combined with a significantly high level of charisma gave them the chance of a lifetime. <coughs> Excuse me. Something they had been waiting for throughout their pro wrestling careers. Um... Now, on the pre-show of WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, Texas, the Dudley Boys competed against the Usos. After winning that match that night, the Usos had to face Bubba, Ray, and Devon against the next, again the next night in the tables match. The Dudleys managed to win the match on Raw and started boasting and arguing with the fans at ringside as they started to walk up the ramp. Uh, Enzo Amore and Big Cass music hit, and Dallas crowd erupts. Just a year later, Enzo More and Big Cass were in a prominent spot at WrestleMania 33, which we know, although Cass was once told that he was uh, there because of his height, um, he did not get fired. He can now say that he defied the odds and is one of the most popular competitors on the entire roster. You know, if he did not get fired because of his height, great. Who cares then? He didn't get fired. That's the number one story. He almost got fired. I don't know why this new story is coming out right now, though, um, but let's just talk about it anyways. He's him not getting fired because of his height is a great thing, though, because he didn't get fired, right? Thank God to his height that he's still here. Otherwise, he would have been gone. We would have seen this Enzo more in big casting. It's good that his height saved him. If, if that's what it takes to save a guy nowadays, then so be it. Take that as something that you have uh, truly, like, you know, if you have height like that and you've been kept on the roster for that, you got good things, man. You, you got destiny in you, all right? There's a lot of great things for you to come. Just take it as something that, oh, man, you know, I think, you know, 
just because of my height, I'm here. I now get this, now I get this chance to prove them that no, I'm not here only because of my height. I'm here because I am a professional wrestler, one of the best. He's trying to do that. He's striving to do that. He's going there, man. You got to always take whatever they say to you. It doesn't matter how much shit they say to you. They said that you're here because of your height. Use that. Use that point and tell them and prove them. Prove it to them that, no, I'm not only here because of my height and do everything else that they think you couldn't do. That's how I think he took it. And, you know, look, he's successful now. Right? He really is. Uh, the tag team of Enzo Moore and Big Cass, um, they're starting to stale a little bit. But, uh, you know, quick adjustments, little adjustments can really have this team back on the, uh, you know, train, airplane, whatever you want to call, um, right back to the Raw Tag Team title picture, which, you know, they can easily grab onto, be a part of that, and, you know, hopefully you know, we can see a match with the Hardy Boys, you know, match with, you know, whoever it is, man. Revival, NXT, you know, the NXT championship, uh, former champion, well, not not them, but, you know, it's a, it's sort of an NXT-type feel in that match if it ever happens as a more big cast and uh you know the revival two of the biggest nxt tag teams right so congratulations to big cast for making it right hopefully i'll be able to congratulate them soon on their raw tag team title wins because i want to see these guys as champions it's very cool to see these guys as champions um and hopefully they can continue but colin cassidy big cast uh talks about his job and nearly being fired um again man if you you know we're told that you're here because of your height, then fuck it. You're here because of your height. Prove them wrong because you got the opportunity now, right? If you were left here and said, oh, you know, uh, you're, you're here because of your height, God must have done something to you, you know? You must have, something must have happened to you. Like, you earned this spot. You got this spot, whether it was by luck or not. Now you have the opportunity to not fail, right? Not be, you know, kicked out of the door. You got that opportunity. And he, they, not he, but they, uh, took it to new levels. So that's good on them, man. Now, something else that is good on these guys. All right. This is the last story that I'll be talking about here on this part. Uh, the first part of Rumors, Reports, News, Controversy. And the second part will be uploaded on VidMe. The last video here, man. Young Bucks. These guys. They comment on signing with WWE. And they say it's not cool at the moment. Very, you know precise choice of words so they're real life brothers man the young bucks matt and nick jackson are arguably the hottest tag team on the indie scene today um <clears throat> uh it says right here that the uh one second the damn ads man the damn ads the brothers recently joined former wwe champions tag team champions edge and christian i, I, I listened to that it was pretty sick two hour podcast uh, you know enc's pot of awesomeness they are my new podcast to listen to i'm sorry i'm always derailing here but they are such that podcast is absolutely great to listen to, man. If you have not checked it out, it just recently, you know, um, was created about, a, you know, I guess two, one or two months ago. And, you know, they had these guests each week, each week. You know, I haven't watched, I haven't listened to their podcast today, but I'll listen to it to maybe possibly tonight or tomorrow. Um, they are, you know, very interesting duo, you know, to do a podcast with. But nonetheless, they were on that show or podcast, as they say it. Nick said that the decision to leave Impact Wrestling was pivotal in their careers as they took a chance on themselves that ultimately paid off. One of those moments was leaving TNA. To be honest, it took guts for us to leave. Something that could have been even more better than what it was at this point. But we felt like we were being underutilized. And at that point, uh, and we weren't making money at all, really. Um, then it continues to say here, I think it took guts for us and showed us, you know, that we had confidence in ourselves to leave, you know, um, and try something new on our own. From there, we said to ourselves, let's just try something different, try to have fun. And from there, you know, uh, it seemed like, you know, it clicked. Um, as for a possible jump to WWE, Nick says that it's a possibility. Well, he actually says it isn't a possibility right now, right? So because they are currently under contract. Right now, we can't. Obviously, because we're under contract for the next, you know, what, 18 months or so, but I don't know. It's such a hard question to answer because right now it's say no. And I heard this podcast. I can remember without reading this article. They said simply because um, they feel as if right now the life they're living is great. 
They get the money. They get what they want to you know, do, and that's wrestle. And why would they want to change that? Totally acceptable answer, man. Uh, we're having a good time doing it. I don't know. It's never say never, I guess. Uh, you can't really say no to that because it's the place everyone has wanted to wrestle. So I can't say no, but as of right now, we're happy with what we're doing. Uh, even if we were available right now, uh, it is not the time for us to go because everybody in the world is going there. And so the first time I can ever remember, it doesn't seem like it's cool to go there right now. Um, I think uh, for us, uh, if we do go, we may get lost in the shuffle. And this is where Edge said that, no, I don't think that's possibility that you would get lost in the shuffle. Um, <coughs> excuse me. He also stated that it would be tough to give up creative control with a jump to WWE. They continue to say, and we're so, so, so appreciated uh, right now, like, you know, by the uh, companies we wrestle for. Uh, like we're, you know, pushed to the top where in the main events, we're pretty much, uh, you know, getting whatever we want creatively. Uh, like we're doing our own angles at this point. So, you know, how do we, you know, it would be so hard to walk away from that. But in 18 months, two years. Or whatever the case is, our contract ends. It'll be interesting because I'm not, or he's then he continues to say, I'm sure we're going to at least walk um, on that road one day and possibly, you know, talk about this uh, going to that company. And I think if it doesn't happen in 18 months, then it probably won't ever happen. The Young Bucks, man, I've heard about this tag team. I've not watched them. I've heard they are the hottest tag team on the indie scene. I've heard that. You know, like the Hardy Boys, they are that tag team that certainly can put on great matches. Again, like the Revival or like, you know, uh, DIY, right? Here's the thing about it, man. In wrestling, especially WWE, I certainly wanted to see these guys in, in NXT. I'm not going to say anything about this because I think whatever is good for them is good for them. I think that if these guys are not going to WWE, good. Because you know how spoiled WWE comes with their talent that they have, they ruin them. They do. They truly do. And then they to try to get them out of that hole that they've dug can be difficult at times. These guys don't deserve that hole. You know, they deserve the tree that's growing out of that hole all the way to the top. That's what they deserve. That's what they deserve to be and be at. If they're not going to WWE, that's fine. 18 months, we'll see if that happens. Truly a treat if they go to NXT first. You know, you got two years, man. Go to NXT, have fun there. And when you go to the main roster, they're going to get fucked by Vince. But, you know, that's later on in the future. Whatever the case is, man, Young Bucks, again, I think that they are better suited where they are. Um, certainly, if they go to WWE, it's not going to be about the wrestling all the time. The wrestling is going to be dumbed down a little bit, especially when you go on the main roster. It's going to be about your characters. So let's hope that they can pull off whatever stupid ass, you know, idea Vince comes up with like he does all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, part one is over. I will see you in part two on vid.me slash WWMovemaker for right now. Stay tuned for that video. It'll be up very, very soon. Peace out, guys. Part two, vid.me slash WWMovemaker. Check it out right now.